when you're investigating leaks at the Department of Justice and the FBI, I hope you will include the Mueller team as well. All right. Uh, that voice, that man, you know quite well, Louisiana Republican Senator uh, John Kennedy, who joins us right now. Senator, good to have you. Uh, you were Thank obviously you, yeah. referring to, well, of course, the legion of leaks of, uh, in this entire process, but more to the point, the leak of the letter itself from uh, Bob Mueller's letter to the attorney general. Uh, do you interpret that leak letter as a sign that Mueller and Barr were and are at odds on the findings of this report? I, I don't. I, well, first, Neil, very good question. There, there, there are very few coincidences in politics, and I don't think it was a coincidence that uh, Mr. Mueller's letter leaked the day before Mr. Barr's testimony. Uh, a lot of people got their bowels in an uproar over it. It turned out to be much ado about nothing. Uh, my, my issue was very simple. Okay, Mr. Mr. Mueller was unhappy. It, it turned out he was unhappy about the press coverage. It was turned out he was unhappy because he didn't like the way that Mr. Barr wrote his letter. All that's academic now because we have a final copy of the report. So my, my question was real simple. Has Mr. Mueller changed his mind? Has, has he changed his, conclu his conclusions? Uh, prosecutors either indict or they don't indict. Now, Mr. Mueller said no indictment on conspiracy, no indictment on collusion, no indictment on obstruction of justice. So if he's changed his mind, I want to know. Um, he has not changed his mind. Do you think the fact that he did not obstruction, sir, and I'm not a lawyer, but so mm -hmm. was built on the idea that you, you can't indict a sitting president? No. No, uh, Mr. Barr testified very clearly. He said, I met with Mr. Mueller. I met with, uh, there were a number of people in the room. He said, I, Mr. Mueller was asked, is the reason you're not recommending an indictment on obstruction of justice because of the DOJ policy that you can't indict an sitting president? Mr. Barr said, Mr. Mueller said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So that's a very false narrative. Well, if you're Bob Mueller, and I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here, if you're Bob Mueller and you think that the attorney general, the guy to whom you're submitting this report, mm -hmm. has a certain view on obstruction, what is allowed and what's not, that essentially Mueller pulled his punches because that was kind of the impression from the letter from Mueller in which he said that uh, Barr created public confusion about critical aspects of the results of our investigation. I, I, I saw that, and I asked Mr. Barr about that. Here's what I, and, and look, uh, I, I, I don't know, Neil, but here's what I think. I think Mr. Mueller thought that Mr. Barr's letter was not nuanced enough. Okay, that's academic, because now we have the report. Mr. Barr's letter doesn't matter anymore. I think Mr. Mueller was upset about the news coverage. Well, I don't know what he expected Mr. Barr to do about it. That's up to the news media to cover it like they it want. It seems we like haven't... he's blaming Barr, and I'm making this leap here, so I want to stress that. He's blaming Barr for providing the, 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 the juice for that coverage. I think they're trying to make Mr. Barr look bad, yeah. I, I think that's part of it. I, I don't, don't want to uh, paint with too broad a brush. I think some of my Democratic friends are in good faith here. They've read the report. It's right. done. They're ready to move on. Well, but a I lot think of those I, Democratic I, friends, as you know, sir, are saying, Cory Booker and a host of others, I think three or four others are saying, Barr should resign. How do you feel oh, about that? Oh, I know. I, I know. And that's patently absurd. Um, many of my Democratic friends, not all, but many of them are not in good faith. I mean, Trump could come out tomorrow solidly in favor of children and prosperity, and they would say he's wrong. Uh, and this is the theory of the case now for some of my Democratic friends. Trump covered up a crime that nobody committed. Now, that's, but that's what they're down to. This thing is over. It's over. It's a 488-page report. They threw everything they had at the president, 500 witnesses, 500 subpoenas, uh, no, 3,000 subpoenas, uh, 500 search warrants, 20 lawyers, $25 million. It was a cross between an endoscopy and a colonoscopy. Yeah. And, and well, here's well, what they said. You no let, let, indictment. Let, let, let me repeat it. Let, no indictment. It's right, over. But, but it's let finished. Let me ask you this. In the Senate, you know, it might be over. I mean, you guys have had this, this chat and this back and forth with, with Attorney General Barr. Now, we're told mm -hmm. he is scheduled to go before the House Judiciary Committee tomorrow. But the difference there is they're going to have lawyers interrogating him. I'm not talking about the elected lawyers. 
How do you right. feel about that? If you were to advise the attorney general, what would you tell him to do? Well, I, I think I think it's an insult to the members of the House. Does the chairman think his members, his House members, aren't aren't competent enough to cross-examine or to examine the attorney general? They got to rely on staff. I mean, I know there's some there's some instances where you do need staff, but I don't, right. don't know why they would need it here. Look, look, this is an effort. I'm going to say it again. Many of my Democratic friends have moved on, but some of them haven't, and they're never going to move on. All right. This is about the 2000, uh, uh, the next election instead of the next generation. We shall see. Senator, thank you very much.